I feel like Philippines has a really good reputation. Sorry, I'm, I'm sorry to you guys. A stereotype of the Indian accent is helping you fix device. So sorry, Singapore. <laughs> Maybe not all of them, but I've heard a lot of different accents from a lot of different Asian countries, especially today. So to me, they all sound, for the most part, different. But today, I want to see if I can, we can figure out who is who. <laughs> At least by like the American standard, we don't really hold people to a standard of perfection, at least where I'm from. But I do notice that people from Asian countries, when they learn English, they try really hard to be, to speak it as perfectly, as close to textbook English as possible. That's what I've noticed a lot. You guys really study, study hard. <laughs> Ah, oh, like from the top, like who's the most fluent to like who's maybe like the least. Okay, it's gonna be, it's hard. In my mind, number one, I feel like Philippines would be the highest. Sorry, I'm, I'm sorry to you guys, but yeah, yeah, yeah. And I think number two would be India, number three, Singapore, number four, Hong Kong. But like, honestly, to me, Singapore, Hong Kong, and Malaysia are so like, almost on the same level. Yeah, I think <laughs> maybe like three Singapore, four Hong Kong, five Malaysia, six, oh, Vietnam is really good too. Usually they study really well. So I think six Vietnam, seven South Korea. South Korean people, when they speak English, they have to overcome a lot of pronunciation obstacles. Number eight would be Thailand. Number nine, Japan. Number 10, China. But I think overall, these countries do a really good job with like learning English and pronouncing it. It's just, they're so close together, honestly. Actually, <laughs> just because people love to watch anime these days in America, when people speak with a Japanese accent, people said, oh wow, so you're so kawaii. Like my favorite anime. Americans think that Japanese accents are really cute. I personally think that like, if someone is speaking to me in an Indian accent, I think oh, like, oh, they must be like, oh, he's like a scientist or something. They sound really intelligent. Well, they must do something in like STEM or something. I personally, I really like the Cantonese accent. To me, it sounds really cool or something. I, I, I can't explain it. it just sounds really cool. I ranked it by fluency. I feel like people in the Philippines know like every like, English word and the way that they pronounce it like she pronounces just like the American style so to me Philippines is the closest to American style pronunciation. So sorry Singapore. <laughs> <laughs> I would say it's subjective to how one is being the upbringing is dependable on that factor. I feel like maybe the ranking is because that the entire nation, like everyone really uses English a lot, like across every races, Chinese, Malay, Indian, or any other races, our common language is English. I think that's why they rank the proficiency level as that. And like other countries, they might use often their own languages. Even if you grow up in Singapore, if you learn science, mathematics, you know, your history subjects, all is in English. That's why maybe they rank it as, as such. But it's still dependable on individual. <laughs> I feel like my pronunciation is not the best. I don't want to reason why my pronunciation is not the best, but I have a bad pronunciation, so... I'm so sorry, Singapore, but I love you. Thank you. Thanks for improving my English. I think it's because the main language that they use is really English. Like even the language that they use in the entire education system is English. I know that in, for example, countries like Hong Kong, if you're not in international school, you'll use Chinese, Mandarin for... No, not really. There are two kinds of schools. One is we use English to teach our mathematics or history, and one is using Cantonese to teach yeah. these subjects. Yeah, it depends. But for us, it's the entire is all uh, English. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So even like we have a Chinese school, right? There's a Chinese school in Singapore, but they use English to teach too. Maybe that's why I don't know, but I'm so sorry. I love you, Singapore. Singlish is how I would imagine people think like a Chinese accent sounds like, at least in America. And so, actually, I can understand everything. What is your mother tongue? My mother tongue is Chinese. Okay, I hear a lot of like Mandarin influence when, when she speaks, so 
I think, yeah, as you said, depending on the mother tongue, Singlish can actually be different. I never even thought about that. Thank you for explaining that too. It makes That's sense. That's all a comfort too. Yeah. The Tagalog accent in English can be seen as a little bit more like aggressive sounding. The Filipino, the Tagalog accent with English is very, it's really clear. But and also, I know a lot of people like in Korea go to the Philippines to learn English. And so because of that, I feel like Philippines has a really good reputation for knowing English and teaching English. Even though like Singapore has a lot of high ranking, I think that Philippines should be <laughs> higher than that one. But Singapore also takes a lot of like money and time in learning English too. So it's difficult to truly rank it, I think. It's because Singapore, um, I, I used to work in a company. I'm from the HR, human resource. So whenever there's an applicant and you're working for, or you're applying for a multinational company, they would give you their ranking of, you know, the English proficiency grade. So I think growing up, they are preparing themselves to have those um, examinations to assess their English. So yeah, and I also think that Singapore English um, varies because they are following the British English. So yeah, in the Philippines, for the Philippines, we basically follow the American English and we watch all the television, uh, the shows, the movies in English, so we don't need the subtitle. Um, most of our subjects were taught in English in, rather than Filipino or tag Tagalog. So yeah, I think that influenced the English speaking proficiency of Filipinos. Yeah. I think Malaysia, it depends on how the person grow up. Some people, they come from an English speaking family. Some people, they, uh, they speak Malay at home. Some people speak Chinese at home. For my case, I went to a Chinese speaking school when I was in primary school. So I think it really depends on the environment. And we also learn science and maths in English, but most, I think the rest of the subjects we learn in Malay. And I also think that I kind of agree that Singapore has a good command of English because I have studied with the textbook of Singapore before. So I think, yeah, mostly like the environment. So every individual is different. Malaysian English? Actually, this is the first time I've ever met a Malaysian person. <laughs> I think so. Honestly, your English skill is basically perfect. So <laughs> you, could, you could easily live in the States and have no problems. Nice. Actually, I think all of you guys could. <laughs> it's like she's using a lot of the proper, like trying to use as much proper articles as possible. Mm -hmm. Like they and the at, on, in. That's what really stands out to me. When I hear like someone from like Korea or Japan or China speaking English, they don't have those articles in their languages. And so it's hard to remember to use those when speaking English. And so to me, like you really learned like in a proper, proper English style. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. In Hong Kong, we actually learn English when we are in kindergarten and actually there are two types of schools primary school secondary school and there are Chinese school and English school so in English school we will learn mathematics science or others and other subjects or by English and in Chinese school just in Cantonese uh, so I think people graduate from English school can speak better in English. I think Hong Kong people can speak simple English, simple words, so I think there is no obstacles for us to speak English. Sometimes if I've met a lot of like Hong Kong Canadian people, so to me, <laughs> when I think like Hong Kong English, I think, oh, it's like Canadian style, which is also UK influenced. So I always think of like a connection between like Hong Kong and the UK. I know that Hong Kong used to be colonized by the UK. So it makes sense that it would follow that route of language, like the accent wise and vocabulary wise. Uh, and also we watch a lot of American dramas and movie mm -hmm. and also we speak Cantonese, so we mix all of it. So the accent, I think. Accent turns more American. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> America for the win. <laughs> 
A lot of people, like in America, if you have a problem with like your Samsung device or any kind of like technological device, you call the call center and it's someone from India. And so a lot of times, we Americans are first introduced to the Indian accent if they have an issue with their refrigerator. I remember in Florida, actually an Indian family like purchased a bunch of Burger Kings. And so just hearing more and more of the accent. I, I watched a little bit of like the, like the, the Bollywood, <laughs> the Bollywood movies. And so I'm like, aha. But usually like a stereotype of the, like the Indian accent is like someone who's going to be working as a scientist or working, helping you fix like a device or you know someone at your favorite Indian restaurant. To me, it sounds like it's a uh, it's proper English. First of all, you said that you also like focus on like the proper pronunciation. But then I it sounds like the the vowels and the consonants are a little bit quickly more more quickly spoken. And so actually, to me, I like that more because where I'm from, people really speak slowly, and it takes a a long time. Actually, we have a lot of languages. It's 200 plus, so. No blame to Indians because they're already learning three languages from childhood, like from the kindergarten. So it's a lot of pressure for languages and for other subjects like science, math, and uh, like social science, everything. And also languages are really important for us because we know that further we have to study in a foreign country or something. So on kids it's a lot of pressure so i would rather say don't focus on the accent just go for the studies <laughs> because we are already start giving our best and also every individual city has its own accent in english i can understand this because i am from different city my friend is from different city we have a different accent in english so i can understand the things now so yeah, it's okay if we are not in the list. <laughs> yeah, they're already studying a lot. I don't know, it's it's really hard to rank. I don't know, Americans are so used to speaking like one language. And so these ladies here, they speak two, three, four, five. <laughs> I speak like one and a half. And so <laughs> the way that they can learn all of these languages and still speak English probably better than I can technically. I speak a lazy form of English actually. So they, it's really, impressive and I really wish that I can give you guys all of the same ranking. So I think that, I really think that Philippines and India are kind of like still at the top. At the same time, why, why do we have to have rank? <laughs> why is ranking necessary? I don't know. I, I really lean towards like Indian accent is more attractive out of everyone here. So today I tried to rank everyone from their country based on their fluency and pronunciation in English. If you like the video, please like, subscribe, and leave a comment. We will see you soon. Bye!